He, his paper is entitled uh, Minimally Invasive Surgery Training in Latin America. Thank you very much. Before anything, thanks to the IFSES, the opportunity to participate in this important panel with so distinguished members. And of course, thank to Sejis also for the opportunity to be here. Uh, the Federation, the Latin American Federation of Surgery, as many of you know, is integrated with most of the Latin American countries. We are 18 countries, and each one has his own surgical society. So between all of them, probably we represent the second largest society in the world. We have 30,000 members, approximately. You know. So probably after the American College of Surgery, it's one of the largest one. Uh, this uh, federation, the FELAC, was uh, founded in 1973. And as I said, you know, it's integrated by the Surgical Society of 18 countries. There, is, there are numerous endoscopic societies in Latin America. Some of them are a branch of the General Surgical Society, and some of them are independent. What we have done in education of minimal invasive surgery, as you know, the beginning of the laparoscopic era, and we have here some of the fathers of these uh, new techniques, on minimal invasive surgery was really an explosion and many laboratories and university and teaching hospital and private institution were installed all over Amer Latin America. Initially, important economical support was obtained from corporation and society to set these labs and the only purpose was to train on basic laparoscopy. Still now, some countries do not even have the minimal facilities. Really was an explosion nothing to be, no comparison with the one of, in Iceland, but this one in Ecuador in those years. And so we set several questions of how we should conduce the education in Latin America. So we got a group of, uh, of surgeons and we got together and I was, our aim was directed to implement a program suitable for the majority of our country members setting the standards of teaching in Latin America and with the main purpose of simplification and unification of the education of this new surgical technique. We know that each country has its own rules, but we try to just to unify the criteria so everybody in a smooth times could come to an agreement in the way that we have to teach. On May 205, the Advanced Practical Laparoscopy course was launched. It's, this took two, three years to elaborate, to fully elaborate, and this uh, uh, is basic, a complete textbook on, uh, and a CD that includes some of the most common surgical disease in our country. And of course, the treatment with minimal invasive technique. It's designed to be easy for consultation and available only after taking a course. This is the book. This was done by a collaboration of more than 30 surgeons from Latin America and uh, between Nathan Sundel, Alberto Chuslev Elias, and myself, we did this initial work. The program, beside the whole program, has 26 videos that are very important part of it. It shows the different procedures narrated professionally with remarks on the key points of each one. Meanwhile, reading a movie can be played and the program is all able to return to the topic in a very interactive way. As you see, many of the procedures are the most common, you know, probably also from the United States and Europe, but especially we pay attention to the pathology in the Latin American countries that in some way, in certain cases, is different. What we did is to first to teach the teachers, so the teachers and instructors got another 2CD. The idea was to standardize the education and simplify the course. Instead of each one come and speak about a, a cholecystectomy, so it, all, of, all of the teachers will follow the same, the same program. The first CD contains 20 lectures and the second TD, CD contains step-by-step -step videos of all the animal lab. We are using, we believe that animal labs is very good to apply in our countries. Of course, you have seen mentoring and, you know, long uh, uh, robotics and 
distance, you know, thousand kilometers of distance. This is something that we cannot apply in Latin America. And we believe that still the labs are the most important thing. In, and the, uh, this will allow to practice to the alumni and to follow all the, all, all, all the steps during the education of this minimal invasive surgery. As you see, it has different sections, different topics. This is on the revise now, the, the, the book, and I will let you know at the end what we are doing now. But initially what we have is the, also a course, you know, that is a two days course that 16 hour duration has three parts. The first one is the theory. It's followed by the dry lab practice the, directed to learn suturing and trying techniques and tying techniques. The last part is the animal lab that allow the alumni to use all kind of port access, energy sources, staples, hand assistant devices, suture, ultrasound, and complete some of the common procedures. You know, the dry lab is still a very important part of training. Animal lab, of course, as I said, we don't have a problem with animal laws, and so we can use pigs in all the labs with no problem at all. And of course, trying to apply the new techniques, like in this case, ultrasound. Uh, the book is divided in five sections, as you see in the in, in the in the slide. And the theory is given first. The first part is the equipment and instruments. Second part is laparoscopic learning on suturing and tying techniques, including uh, including advanced microsurgery. There is 20 chapter of the most common pathologies in, in our countries, and the, again, the video section that I told you. Of course, at the end, the suggestive, uh, suggestive lectures. The first four courses were given to 120 well-known surgeons with the idea to prepare the teachers. The group was integrated with doctors from Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, Chile, Ecuador, Guatemala, Mexico, Paraguay, Peru, and Uruguay in four different groups. It was mandatory for the teachers and instructors to participate in the animal lab, transmitting their knowledge and tricks during the practice, allowing them, the trainees, to get the best of the new learning concepts. At this moment, the results have been evaluated as very good by teachers and trainees, but in the near future should be carefully evaluated on larger group on each country and compared with other models of surgical education and reflected on an increased number of surgeries done by minimal invasive techniques. The Committee on Minimal Invasive Surgery of the FELAC agreed to review and include the latest advance of the new trends in surgery. A new program will come out shortly. Two days ago, I was speaking to one of the leaders in, in Spain, that is Professor Eduardo Targarona, and we gave them the, 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 this project, the, you know, the, the, the program, and what he told me that it's already accepted that it's going to be part, obligatory part of the residency training. We just signed this week an agreement with the National University in Mexico City, that is the largest university probably in Latin America, has, has more than 400,000 students, but the medical school with more than 8,000 students, so it's going to be part of the program, obligatory as the residency program, the same like the, the ATLS is going to be this program. So it's under review, and we hope that in one month or two months, we, have, we, we will be able to achieve all the new change that requires the program for to be able and suitable to everybody. FELAC, as a member of IPSES, has attempted in the past, and we continue, collaborated in an effort to find methods to aid the education. Special attention is directed to underdeveloping countries in an attempt to spread these new techniques worldwide, giving to any patient the opportunity to benefit from the advantage of minimally invasive surgery. Everybody knows what Professor Perisat has done in Africa, and so we hope that we can achieve a little more in Latin America and try to unify and to probably get, you know, better benefits for education all over the different countries. Late at the end, I just have to invite you to the Fourth World Congress that is going to be in Puerto Vallarta in two years. 
It's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful area on the beach of the Pacific area. So the time, the season is fantastic, good weather. I'm sure that you're going to enjoy, and hopefully we are going to put a program, one of the best probably, and as good as the one that you have today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Samuel. It's a beautiful and very instructive uh, presentation. I believe that uh, next uh, World Congress of Endoscope Surgery will be succeeded because uh, we, the Japanese, on behalf of the uh, Japanese Society of Endoscopic Society, we will send lots of uh, participants. Our next speaker is, um, on behalf of the uh, Japanese Society of Endoscopic Surgery, I'm very much proud of uh, to be able to uh, introduce our president, uh, Professor Seigo Kitano. Uh, you can remember that he has, uh, he has hosted the uh, last uh, World Congress of Endoscopic Surgery in Yokohama in uh, 2008. Uh, Professor Kitano, please. Well, uh, thank you for this opportunity, very special occasion to uh, participate in this important panel organized by J uh, IFSES and SAGES. Well, uh, recently, 3D visual effects has been become very much popular in the theater movies like this, and then photograph. As a matter of fact, 3D visual effect will be one of the future promising technology for the endoscopic surgery. When we look over the history of the development of laparoscope using the rod lens system by Hopkins in 1953, and then pneumo peritoneum system with automatic insufflation device by the an automatic insufflation system like this, and by SIM in 1963, as considered to be a uh, big steps for the uh, development technology, and then for and eventually to the present elegant procedures. A number of operative techniques in endoscopic surgery have developed in the early 1990s. At present, the majority of the surgeons have to do their task with using long shaft forces under 2D dimension, two dimensional video monitor as seen here. This graph shows the result of a ninth uh, nationwide survey of the J conducted by Jesus. This, you can have a look at the market increase of the cases of, uh, operated by endoscope surgery. Until the end of 2007, we have total number exceeded the 830,000 cases, and the, in particular in the GS uh, diseases, uh, we got uh, the over. 450,000 cases for gastric and uh, large intestine, small stomach, and gallbladder like this. Well, however, it has been shown that patient-friendly, we got just a lot of problem like this. Uh, it has been shown that patient-friendly endoscope surgery put a burden on the operator. According to the report by Berger in 1999, half of the surgeons, operators involved in the, uh, some kind of injury, uh, complained of neck pain, shoulder pain, and wrist and neck and uh, something, uh, shoulder, arm, and then wrist something, a lot of pain there. This indicates that improvement of these brushes or equipment for endoscope surgery is required from the standard standpoint of view, I think a uh, standpoint of view uh, of the ergonomics. This slide shows the uh, some list of the issues raised by endoscopic surgery. These issues are number one: limited manipulation by handheld, long shafted forceps, also uh, s uh, some limitation of the movement. Number two: operative field. 
two dimensions, no depth sense, no volume sense, and uh, narrow field of vision, uh, also low quality vision. Number three, surgical pressures that lack the sense of touch like this. The third, I think the, this is the uh, hopeful advantage of the 3D laparoscope surgery. In the 3D laparoscope has been developed since 1990s to provide a more realistic view of the operative field. A realistic view of the operative field was expected to uh, contribute to the increasing safety level and shortening of the operation time and the learning curve. In developing the 3D laparoscope, we refer to the cognitive mechanisms of human beings. People receive images with the right and left eyes and recognize objects by constructing them by three-dimensionally within their brains. Therefore, as shown in this figure, a 3D laparoscope equipped with two cameras at the end of the laparoscope's first devices. As a mechanism to recognize this three-dimensional view, use of the popular, uh, polarized lens or monitor using diffraction or light has been developed. Evaluation of the 3D laparoscope began and the George's group compared laparoscope cholecystectomy using a 3D laparoscope with surgery using uh, existing 2D laparoscope. As a result, unfortunately, they reported that the 3D laparoscope gave, no, gave very little expected advantage, such as improvement of subjective symptoms or a shortening of the operation time, but rather induced a feeling of fatigue in the eyes and made the pressure feel some uncomfortable. I th think it's something like the motion sickness. But I think it's uh, some kind of a, uh, some it differs from person to person. Some some person will may tolerate well, but some others uh, are not so tolerate well. I think it's uh, some relationship between the motion sickness. I'm not sure, you know. Well, uh, similar I results were obtained during the anastomosis in the colectomy procedures, like this. This was significant constellation because the image from the right and left sides cause side differences, rotation, error, or vertical shift. Well, in order to overcome these issues, a new bidimensional development has been forward. One dimension of this is an apparatus with the an adjustment function with the which the distance between the posi uh, position of the operator's eyes and the object is made close in high vision images as with the 3D laparoscope of the Da Vinci system, a robotic surgery, Da Vinci, and the other is a system that creates 3D images with one high vision camera developed by Wasso Company in Korea. This is the, in the left hand side, you can see the top of the Da Vinci, uh, right hand side, uh, Wasso Company. This slide shows the uh, uh, details of Wasso Company uh, laparoscope with which the right and left images are formed by rotation of the lens built into the camera. We evaluated the Wasso 3D laparoscope in laparoscope surgery. Our study showed that this laparoscope provides better depth uh, perception in both uh, novice, but uh, not only for the novice, but also the experienced surgeons. For the 11th World Congress Endoscopic Surgery in 2008 in Yokohama, laparoscopic gastric and colon surgery were co recorded in videotape as, as when they used in with these two types of 3D laparoscope and edited. They were 
presented at the Congress being displayed as 3D images. The point of improvement shown on this slide was uh, dis already described. These points were attachment and automatic focus, development of, of an oblique viewing endoscope, and the development of a naked eye monitor. When improved, hopefully in the near future, 3D image will be an essential part for training and education. So this is my final slide. It is desirable that uh, this type of patient-friendly surgery becomes surgeon-friendly one from the ergonomic standpoint of view. One of the important issues to achieve is the uh, development of 3D laparoscope system. We are looking forward further technological and uh, so-called I think the economic development to provide better training and education for younger surgeons in the near future. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.